Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to build a farmhouse in 1-100 scale. So last week I started production for the models I'm doing for the great YouTube paint-off that Lack of Foresight Gaming is hosting. This has proved to be a lot of fun, and I've committed to building a diorama. Well, the vehicles are now pretty much wrapped up on the diorama, but I really need some extra interesting pieces on the base itself to establish a sense of scale and a location where the diorama is taking place. Since it features World War II Russian vehicles and uh, late war German vehicles, it really had to be sort of a rural Eastern European look. So I've decided to build a little wooden farmhouse. It's not a tough build, but it's a good build. And it's one that you can put a lot of character into and try out different techniques on. I also realize it's been quite a while since I've done a terrain project on the channel. So sit back and watch. I'll show you the techniques I use to build a wooden farmhouse, and maybe it can help you develop some new techniques to up your own miniature building game. Like every miniature building project for me, it always starts with a plan. And at the root of the plan is the base. So taking out my hot foam cutter, I cut out a styrofoam base from half inch insulation styrofoam, and it's about 24 centimeters long by about 15 centimeters wide. After that was done, I then mapped out where on the base the individual elements of the project would go. In this case, we're specifically concerned about the farmhouse, but I needed to know where it was going to be in relation to the other elements of the project. What followed was a lot of boring math. I measured out the space on the base to try to figure out just exactly how big the farmhouse should be. And it resulted in being about six centimeters tall by about eight centimeters long by about five centimeters wide. At this time, I also concluded what else I would need on the base. I would need some trees for landscaping, some brick walls for going around the house, and some various other points of visual interest. This brought up a bit of a conundrum. Typically, I like to build the components myself out of foam, foam core or other household materials, but because this was a contest, I really needed to pull out the stops. That meant that I went over to Thingiverse, downloaded some files, and 3D printed a lot of the stuff that was maybe pushing my skills. Altogether, I ended up printing shingles for the house, brick walls for the base, and some interesting tree armatures. But let's get back to the house. I started by cutting out some balsa wood strips that were pretty thin, and I cut them in the shapes of the wall of the house itself. The side walls, the front wall, and the back wall, including the gables on the end. Once I had these cut out, I then took some pins and put them right through the balsa wood, pinning them to a block of styrofoam. It was just a block of any old extra styrofoam that I had around. In this case, my sister-in-law gave it to me. Thanks, Michelle. Then I took the piece of styrofoam, went to my hot foam cutter, and cut the foam to the shape required for the house itself. I used the components I had pinned to the front and back to mark exactly where the angles were for cutting the roof. It was now time to figure out where the windows and doors were going to go. The first thing I did was go back and remove the pins and pull the balsa wood plates off the sides of the styrofoam core of the building. Then I went to my bits box and got out some 3D printed windows and doors that I made for a previous project and laid them out on the balsa wood. When I was happy with where their final locations were going to be, I took out a sharp knife and cut out around the windows. I now moved on to texturing the walls. I took the balsa wood plates 
and measured out boards on them roughly half a centimeter apart, and then went ahead with a pen and scored the lines into the wood. This would make it appear that the balsa wood plates were composed of many different boards all fastened together. With this finished, I now super glued the windows into place. At this point, I could now assemble the house properly, and I got out my hot glue and glued the plates to the sides of the building. I also cut out some plain rectangles of wood and glued them over the roof. When this was finished, I got out some matchsticks and glued them along the edges and the seams on the wood to cover the joins and to add some visual interest and make it look like the house at eaves. Now it was time to add the shingles. And as I said, I 3D printed these earlier because I didn't feel like cutting out individual shingles from card or cardboard. And I went and glued them in strips to the roof using super glue. I staggered where they started and stopped. And then when they were done, gave them a quick spritz with super glue accelerant and cut off the ends to make the edges kind of ragged. To paint the model, I started by undercoating the whole thing with black, and then I went on to work on the wood. I started by dry brushing the whole model old wood by Vallejo, and inc added increasing levels of ivory paint to this mix, re-dry brushing it, creating several layers. Lastly, I focused on a final dry brush with just pure ivory. Truthfully, this all came out a little stark, so I decided it was time to shade this, and I went on to use an enamel. First, I sprayed the whole model with a coat of satin varnish to protect the underlying layers, and then I got out brown for dark yellow vehicles by AK Interactive, and washed it over top of all of the wood. When this is, had dried, it had suitably played down the color gradient in the different layers, and I decided to accentuate the gaps in the boards a little more by taking out some black ink and hand painting them into the spaces. Now I needed to add a little more variety in terms of colors, so I got out my AK Interactive Dark Rust Weathering Pencil and wet it and then ran it around the window sills and the eaves. After it had dried a little bit, I took out a damp brush and blended it in. This allowed the highlights from the previous dry brushing to show through, but put a bit more of a red tone into the building. Now I needed to move on to the shingles, and for this I needed to mask off the work I had done so far, so I got out some masking tape and wrapped it around the wood. I didn't want any of the airbrush work I was doing on the upper side of the building to destroy the work I had done previously. For the shingles themselves, I started with a, a general spraying of Rust by Vallejo Air, and then over top of this I sprayed on some Earth Yellow. I kept the Earth Yellow coat directed towards the peak, the outside, and anywhere where the light would be falling directly on the shingles themselves. Now I got out some Vallejo Ivory and gave all the shingles a light dry brush. This was to just create the impression that there are some very raised portions on the shingles that reflect just that much more light. When this was done, I needed something to tie it all together, so once again I decided to rely on an enamel. I sprayed the work on the shingles with a satin varnish to seal it, and then I got out NATO Black Enamel Wash. I put it on a brush and lightly applied it over the top. As it dried, this suggested some shadows and brought out the cracks and gaps between the shingles. Using a Q-tip, moistened with a little white spirits, I went back over the black wash and wiped away any that was sitting on top of the raised surfaces. I wanted to make sure that it was pushed down into the crevices and created shadow, but didn't 
darken the color of the shingles overall. Going back to my weathering pencils, I got out a variety of colors, mainly rust reds, dark browns, and some different deep shades of green, and wet the pencils. I worked this into various spots on the model, including on specific shingles, on streaks on the side of the model, and in around the window frames. Once this had partially dried, I then went ahead and got out a damp brush and blended it all out. The effect was subtle, but it added some weathering colors to the building and in some places made it look like moss was growing on it. Lastly, I got out some extra model lichens, applied a little Mod Podge and patches on the outside of the building, and stuck the lichens on to imply that vines were growing up the sides of the building. This added a little more greenery and increased the visual interest. This pretty much wrapped up the work on this project, so I got out my airbrush and gave the model a couple coats of matte varnish to protect it. And with that, this part of my entry for the great YouTube paint off was complete. Now I had a rustic house fit for the eastern front that's ready to be placed on the base. It has plenty of color and points of visual interest. In fact, I found that the more I looked at it, the more little nuances I noticed, which of course was perfect for a competition piece. Now all I need to do is get my model building skills together, round up the supplies, and go ahead and actually build the base. We'll deal with this in some upcoming episodes. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please stay tuned in the future for more content on the great YouTube paint off. And in the meantime, you might want to head over to Lack of Foresight Gaming's channel to check out his content. It's really great. You can also learn more about the other participants in the contest there as well. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers please check out the links in the video description to go to my Patreon page or check out my Etsy store. Many of the builds I feature on this channel are for sale in the store. Thanks for watching, and remember, until next time, keep building life in miniature.